Hello, my friends. This is Roman Ivanov, real estate agent with Remax Select Realty. And today I'm interviewing a mortgage specialist, Michael Cazales. Um, I want to say hi, Mike. Um, if you would hey, introduce us, uh, introduce yourself to our viewers, to our clients and friends. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Michael Cazales. I'm a mortgage loan officer for Union Savings Bank here in Pittsburgh. Um, I'm a mortgage loan officer on the residential side as well as commercial. Um, I've been doing it for a handful of years now. Um, Roman and I actually have a good amount of experience working together and uh, appreciate him for having me on here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Michael, so let's start. Um, I get a lot of questions about mortgages and um, I would like to ask these questions so you can educate and help us uh, navigate through this difficult and complicated process. Sure. So what is this process starts from? What kind of documents people need to start the process? How it all starts? Sure, so the very first step should be to talk to a mortgage loan officer like myself um, so that they can kind of direct you where you need to go. Because um, it's not always, it doesn't always make the most sense to jump right into a mortgage application because there's various reasons why, you know, there's upfront disqualifiers from someone getting a mortgage. Um, for instance, if they get, you know, updates on their on their phone or the credit karma or whatnot, and they see they have a 520 credit score. It's probably not the best time to get a hard inquiry on your credit um, in a pursuit of a mortgage. Um, so, so I'd say the first step is to talk to a loan officer, uh, just get a high level understanding of what your current situation is with employment, uh, available funds out of pocket to put towards the down payment and closing costs. Um, even your plans for short-term and long-term um, plans and goals with the property at hand. So I guess um, an easy way to answer that is just the very first step is to talk to a local mortgage professional, um, have them vet through some of the necessary information verbally uh, before diving in to do a full mortgage application. Good, good, good tip. And Mike, you also mentioned uh, that uh, credit score can be affected by heart inquiry uh, from the lender, can can you can you explain a little more about um, credit score, the number, the minimum number that that's needed, and how this hard inquiry might affect or or might not affect? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, credit score has a very big impact on your uh, qualifications and the type of rate that you can get with your mortgage. Um, I know a lot of people come to me and we have that initial discussion. I ask them, "Do you have any idea what your credit score is?" Um, and if they don't, I tell them to go to one of the free um, sites like a Credit Karma, um, and just as a disclaimer, it is not a you know 100% certainty that what your credit score shows on Credit Karma is what it's going to be when it goes through a legitimate pool from a, uh, from a loan officer. Um, but what those sites do is give you a good idea of what your monthly debt obligations are, and you can see if there has been any recent missed payments um, that are showing up on your credit. And um, you know it, it is at least a good place to start now. I know a lot of people have hesitations on a hard inquiry on your credit, and unfortunately it's necessary if you're trying to buy a house and trying to look if you are pre-approved, because for a lender to do their due diligence, they must pull your credit from the three major credit bureaus um, as a hard inquiry. Um, and now what the credit bureaus do give you, they give you the ability to shop around, meaning they're not going to hit a hard inquiry to your score every time the lender pulls your credit within a 45 day window. Um, so just to reiterate, the credit bureaus do give you a 45 day window to get multiple credit pools from different lenders so you could shop around on rate and terms, and it's only going to count as one hard pool against your credit. Oh, excellent. I hear this question <clears throat> all the time, and you got excellent tip, especially with Credit Karma. I use that site myself all the time just to make sure everything's in line. Sometimes I, I hit with uh, some sort of automatic payment uh, through my credit card and you don't necessarily log into all these accounts but i i, I just keep tracking through credit karma it's, it's it's a good very good side yeah definitely helpful well let's let's talk about different mortgages now um i know there is conventional mortgage fha can you tell me about these types maybe you can come up with something else difference and uh what, what it's all about sure yeah, so there's a handful of different loan programs out there. I think the most common that people know of are the conventional and FHA. Um, VA, obviously, for military veterans, and USDA 
um, for more rural classified areas, um, which can carry a 0% down payment. Um, but a, pretty much a, a, a guideline for FHA, you could look at a 3.5% down payment. Um, conventional, what many people don't know, that you could find as little as 3% down conventional loan programs. I know that a lot of people have a common misconception that you need to put 20% down if you want to buy a house, um, which just is not the case at all. Um, and I get people that are hesitant to buy a house in the first place because they don't have a big chunk of money to put down. Um, and a conversation I have with them is, you know, even if you're putting very, very minimal money down on a house, um, you could still look at that. Okay, I have a $1,000 monthly housing payment and rent. Why not have $1,000 in a mortgage payment while I'm gaining equity every month, paying down the principal and then appreciating the home's value over time? Um, 100%. <laughs> you're right. Yes, I always say there is always a mortgage. In most cases, you're either paying your landlord's mortgage or you're paying your own, right? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Good. Good. Yeah. But since we started talking about it, can you tell us what's what's normal what's normal uh, rate uh, mortgage rate these days, and what do you think that it's going to increase, and decrease, going to stay the same? Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So rates they they could vary every day, right? They they go based off of the market. Um, mm -hmm. As a ballpark, you could think right now on a conventional mortgage rate environment, depending on the lender that you go with. Um, you're probably looking anywhere from a 4375 up to maybe a 4625 in the conventional space. Um, FHA, you probably get something a little bit closer to 4% at this time. Um, it's hard to indicate where exactly the rates will go, um, but just from a historical perspective, since 1970, the average mortgage rate is up over 8%. Um, and I know even when my parents bought their first house back in the early 80s, they had a 12% interest rate. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a lot of people inquire about mortgages saying oh i think it are i heard the rates are going up or the rates are pretty high right now aren't they um and i say it all depends on what you're comparing them to are you comparing them to the mortgage rates from a couple years ago after we got out of a recession and they were the lowest lowest mortgage rates in history that we've seen then yeah they're a little bit higher than that but for, like i said from a historical perspective if you're getting a mortgage rate in the four percent and the average since 1970 is up over eight percent we're still talking about historic lows on the mortgage rates. Um, but at this current time, ballpark anywhere uh, from the mid fours to the low fours, depending on what type of program you qualify for. Right, Mike. And <clears throat> that's that's very, very, very useful tip again. Thank you so much. I also want to add, uh, if rates gonna go up, then your the rate's gonna be locked at, at, at the current level. But if they're gonna go down, they can always go back to you and refinance at the lower right rate, right? Absolutely, yeah, refinancing is always an option. And I know some people are hesitant about the thought of refinancing because they see how much closing costs are on a purchase and they think that that's gonna have to be replicated in a refinance. And that's not always the case. Um, there's lenders out there that offer really low refinances. Um, my bank especially, you can get away with a refinance for just $500 out of pocket. <laughs> very, very nice, yeah, absolutely. And also, Mike, um, very common question I get, um, what is pre-qualification versus pre-approval? What's the difference yes. between these two words, between these two um, pre-qualification versus pre-approval? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of people think they're synonymous terms and they're actually not. Um, pre-qualification, what that is, is um, just a verbal discussion with the loan officer and they tell you what they believe that you get it pre-approved for off of their best guess. They're not pulling credit. They're not looking at any income documents. A pre-approval takes it a step further and uh, actually just implies some due diligence on the, on the end of the loan officer. They are pulling your credit. So they're getting your, your credit scores from the three major bureaus. They're going to be able to see what your score is, any missed payments, um, any blemishes on your credit that might disqualify you from getting a loan. Um, and then they also verify your income, uh, whether it be through a pay stub, W-2s, bank statements, um, just really to back up what you verbally stated, what your financial details are. They get the concrete documents um, to prove it and gain comfort over issuing the pre-approval to you. Right, right. In other words, pre-qualification, you can get just to get an idea, but before you go and really shop for a home, you really have to 
provide all these documents to law officers. So uh, you, you can be 100% certain that uh, the transaction going to go through, right? Exactly. And it's it really isn't too big of a hassle when you think of it, because if you get your hopes up to buy a house that you, you're interested in, you spend time out of your day and your realtor's day to go see the property, comes time you want to make an offer, but you didn't do the full pre-approval and realize you can't afford the house. Uh, kind of just wasted time and wasted excitement um, for everyone involved. So oh, it's a, it's oh, a yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know sometimes it, it, it's hard. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Well, let's assume the good scenario. And um, if a borrower or buyer uh, got his pre-approval from the time of starting the application, finding a house to actually closing, um what necessary steps and how long does it take after you after they accept your offer I mean? yeah so the um i guess just the home buying process in general roman as you know there's many different people that have their hand in the process right um mm -hmm. you know there's inspections that need to be done there's the appraisals um obviously the mortgage lending and underwriting process the title companies need to do their work um so there's a lot of moving parts at once um depending on who you choose as those vendors for title, mortgage, um, how on top of things your real estate agent is, um, the process can be started and closed within 30 days as long as everyone's on track. There's no hiccups in the process, no required repairs due to uh, the inspection report and whatnot. Um, so usually people like to build a buffer of 45 to 60 days to close. Um, not only will the seller get a chance to wrap up their items to get out of the house and um, establish a new place to live, um, but it just doesn't put too hard of a stress on the timeline for the vendors that have you know multiple other deals going at once uh, that may need service as well. Um, but can be done within 30 days, maybe even less if if it if the situation requires it. Um, but a good ballpark would be you know 45 days to 60 to to wrap up everything. Good, good. Yeah, I 100% I agree with you. Typically, when I write an offer, I usually give myself just a few days over 30, let's say, just, just pick a day some, somewhere in the week if uh, Friday would be the best for my clients. And um, the way I estimate, I, I give 30 days plus whatever whatever it takes to the, to the closest Friday. Just because people usually buy a house and want to move in right away. And typically, people do it on the weekends. So I think that's that's pretty good ballpark. Sometimes it, it, in certain situations it needs a little uh, extra time, but just as a ballpark, that's that's about it. Thirty days plus a little a little extra. So right. and, and at the end of the day, uh, you and I both we're in the service business, so it's really you know if there's something that our client really needs to get done, uh, we're going to do what we need to do to get it done for them. So if that whether that's a thirty day closing, a, a twenty six day closing, or a sixty day closing. Um, it's kind of all about the client. Exactly. Well, thank you, Mike. You, you answered all the questions that I typically get from my clients, from my friends in regarding mortgages. I really appreciate your time uh, you spend with me and uh, your knowledge that you shared with uh, with our viewers. Uh, thank you so much uh, for for the interview. I appreciate yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to doing it again. All right. Sounds good. Bye bye. Okay.